Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the fourth part in this landscape planning uh, series that I'm doing in this backyard, in this house I moved into in Raleigh, North Carolina. The first one was uh, showing how, to, um, how I'll go about doing soil tests. The second one was the layout of the space and just how the traffic flow is gonna go uh, in the future. And uh, number three, I put out some compost here. Uh, the, in this one right here, I'm going to edge uh, these uh, lines that I had painted on the ground in the second part, uh, in the second part of this series and uh, just create a, just a permanent trench edge uh, to differentiate where this, is, you know, this patio is going to be. It's grass right now, but it will eventually be some sort of patio with uh, potted plants and that kind of thing. And, and furniture and possibly some sort of covered space over top of it, I haven't decided yet. Uh, and these paths right here are going to be some sort of stone path. Uh, for now, in this video series, um, this is going to be turf. And the paths I'm actually going to do is pine straw and the rest of the space will be mulch. And, and, and I, got, I had some, uh, a tree service on the road one day and I got some wood chips here on the driveway that I'm gonna use for the mulch. But the reason I'm gonna use pine straw in the paths for now, it will differentiate uh, two different colors. Uh, and, and, and the path will be noticeable for now. It'll be in the spring probably before I do actually lay stone for the path. That's the reason for that. But in this video, I'm gonna be edging uh, the lines that I had painted on the ground, and I just use a trenching shovel for that. There are all kinds of edging tools. Uh, there are uh, little half moon, uh, very, very sharp ones that lots and lots of people like to use, especially if this is not something you've done before. I'll link one of those below. You can basically cut the line in the ground before you start to tear, to tear the sod up or tear, you know, tear the bed space up. Uh, I've done this long enough that I kind of trust myself just using this, this shovel. There are also flat ones that have little serrated edges on the end uh, that will actually cut roots. If you, have a, if you have a lot of roots in your space, that may be the one to use. Then there's electric and gas edgers, all different types of ways to create a trench edge. But at the end of the day, all we're trying to do is create a crispy edge that will allow a space for our mulch just to fall up against and not end up in our lawns or not end up in our patios, that kind of thing. It just creates a nice, uh, nice differentiation between spaces. So I'm gonna get started on it and, and just kind of show you my technique when I'm dealing with a new space and I'm not re-edging a space. Uh, and uh, hopefully this will help you um, in the future. So I used the upside down paint and painted this line a little bit darker here. If you use, um, you can get this upside down paint at any of the box stores or Amazon or wherever, but it's a paint can you can hold upside down. If you use the paint uh, to paint these lines on the ground, what I've learned is to just use long sweeping motions. You get the best curves if you just swing your arm as far back and forward as you possibly can, and you end up with the best curves, okay? A lot of people will use uh, water hoses for this, where you can lay out a water hose to define the line. I find that in the winter when it's cold, water hoses are not very cooperative at all. They, it works well when the hose is actually warm, uh, but it doesn't, like I say, it doesn't work well when it's cold. You can also use a, uh, uh, some sort of extension cord uh, will work fine and you can lay out your lines, you can move the extension cord around, figure out exactly how you want your curves and then get to work on it. Um, when it hasn't, when I'm in a, doing a space like this and it hasn't been edged before, uh, I will actually come, what I do, what I'm doing here is I'm going straight down, okay, like this and I'm actually flipping the soil out into the bed space, okay, so that my flat edge ends up on the lawn side here just like this. So what's gonna happen is my mulch is gonna, I'm gonna pile my mulch here, and then when I rake it, it's just gonna fall in against the edge of this, this little crispy edge right here. I t what, I, what I do is I will hit a space like this, one spot right there, and then I'll actually come back about six feet from it and do one there, okay? And then I figure out about where I want the, the arc, the top of the arc to be between those two spaces, and I do the same thing right there, okay? Then I actually come in between these two and figure out where I want the top of the arc to be and do the exact same thing right there. And then in between these two, just like that, and kick that back, okay? And now it's just a matter of connecting the dots, okay? That's how I go about doing this. Like I say, there are tools specifically made for this but in this yard the ground is not bad and i'm just not just doesn't require it any kind of root cutting or anything like that right up here in the top few inches of soil so 
Okay, so now I've done about six feet right here and I've got a nice little edge going. I'm going, nice little curve going. I'm gonna come here now, probably about four or five feet away from the end of that. And then right here in the middle again, kick that back. Right in the middle of those two spaces and right in the middle of those two spaces. And now look at this, all I gotta do is connect these lines together. I will have to come back in here and neaten up a couple spots, you know, where it's not quite perfect, but that is my basic technique for doing that. If I come out here and just kind of follow around where I'm going to go here, go to there, right in the center there, right in the center there. And now you can tell I've done this for a long time. You're going to want to stand back and look at it for a minute before you go kicking away. And then I just connect the dots together. All right, I'm going to put the drone up and show you from up high what this looks like as I move around. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just coming down a little bit from that, that first piece I had done that I just showed you, maybe five or six feet, and then coming right here to the center of the arc and doing a space right there, splitting the difference again and again, and then I just connect the dots. And like I say, you won't get it perfect every time the first time, but it can be, it can be worked on. Little, little places that stick out a little bit or don't quite curve properly. Just do them just like that again. I'm gonna slide down here, maybe five or six feet on this arc. Come back to the middle. Come to the, just check between these two. See where I want that to be. Same thing right here. And there we go. And again, we're just connecting dots at that point. Of course, the paint helps because I put the paint on initially. Come over here where this curve is, where the end of this is, come to the middle of it. So that's how I go about edging and uh, differentiating the bed spaces from the turf areas or patios or sidewalks or whatever. Uh, this drone has given me the opportunity to see that places like over here on the, this side of the turf right here sticks out just a little bit. And so uh, I can definitely uh, make quick work of making, making that curve a little bit better there. But uh, stay tuned tomorrow. The uh, fifth part of this series is going to be uh, actually mulching the spaces that are going to end up as uh, bed space. Thanks for watching.